day everyone. Hope everyone's having a wonderful day. Got this great order. Occasionally I will have some military personnel come to me and ask me for some unique things. So I'm making my version of an Arkansas toothpick. I've already heat treated this piece of steel. It's a big one. Doing a coffin style handle. This was typically a trench hand-to-hand -hand combat knife, trench knife, um, Civil War era. So first things first, I have to take out a little wave. See that little wave there? It's been heat treated. I've tempered it in my kitchen oven at 400 degrees for uh, approximately an hour. I actually forgot about it in there, so it, it, it stayed in there a little bit longer. Um, so I'll show you how you get the, uh, get the warp out. So of course you're gonna need some heat, so let's get some heat going. Here we go. Just move you around a little bit more. Okay, here we go. First things first, get it in the vise right where you want it. And I like to visually see um, where the warp is. And just, uh, the circle. Go back here a little bit more too. Okay, so I've got an area on there I, that uh, the, the wave is right in there. You can see that there. Okay. And it's a good place to start. There may be some more waves as we get there. So I'm going to put it in the fork and through the vise. Pretty close to where I want it to bend. Now, this can lead to catastrophic losses too, so uh, there's always that possibility. That's what knife making's all about. Some of you knife makers out there, especially beginners, don't get upset when you break pieces because you're learning. And taking things right to that critical place is how you get the sharpness. So here we go. Just gonna put some heat right on my spot. The torch is not hot enough. This is a big, thick piece of steel too. It looks like uh, uh, five sixteenths. So there's no worries of taking the temper out. If you truly want to anneal a piece of steel, that takes many, many hours and slowly taking it down from critical. So there's no worries of, uh, of anything. So don't worry when they get warped, it's not a big deal. It's already coming out a little bit. Not applying too much pressure, just a little bit. really good. I'm going to cool it down. Okay. Much straighter. But I see another little wave right out at the tip. Can you see that little bit of a wave there? It's right there, right at the tip. Okay, so I've marked it. So I can see where I want to concentrate the, I'll put the tip right in here. 
Again, very easy to break these tips off. So don't be rammy with it. Sometimes the heat itself will move the blade on its own. You need to help it a little bit though. I'm just putting a little bit of... Like it's not bending, like the molecules, they're, they're stressed. So you're just relieve, relieving the stress. It, it remembers being straight. You know what? The original warp has come back a little bit. That can happen too. That means I've got a really tough piece of steel here. It means I've got uh, a great heat treat. Uh, I'm feeling it being quite tough. Okay, I'm going to go back to my original position where I was after cooling it down. Okay. I'm not quite back in the original position, so I think there was like three waves in total. So, you know, the stress pulled it one way, you know, when it went into the water, it could have been off center a little bit, and, and one side touched the water while the other side got a little bit more vapor there, so it was a little bit, uh, that's always the trick, getting straight into the water, but all you have to do is do these simple stages afterwards and you're okay. And then we're going to go to the grinder and, and rough grind this out. It's gone, but because it came back the other way, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit further. Okay. Looks good to me. Cool it down. Okay. It's actually not perfect. It's not perfect. Keep going. I don't like uh, having to grind the warp out. Um, I've noticed that it looks like you're getting it out. It looks like you're grinding it all flat again or straight again. But then when it gets thin, it can get another wave in the, in the thinner part of the blade. So it's really important to, um, to take the time, get it right. Hope everybody's having a nice day. Pretty windy out there, but it's the warmer weather is on its way. So 
So I'm just going to keep some pressure on this blade, pulling it the other way. Think about like muscle fibers being contracted and you're using heat to loosen off the muscle fibers. It's a very similar idea, like there's chains of molecules all linked together and they just need to be massaged. Really tough piece of steel. I can tell that I usually don't have to put on quite this amount of, uh, put this much work into it. Usually comes out right away, but uh, this tells me that I've got a really solid heat treat here. Okay. Beautiful. So once you get it right, it actually becomes like dead straight. Right? It's got memory of being straight in the molecular forms. But it's just like an earthquake. There's stressful areas where it didn't go into the into the quench tank perfectly straight. Okay, there we go. Next step. Wanna come with me and we'll I'll show you how to make this uh, trench warfare dagger. This is my uh, this is my Bader three grinder. It's a two horsepower engine, a ten inch contact wheel, solid, uh, no ribbing. I I would suggest if you were to choose which wheel you want to use, use the solid one. Yes, it doesn't hog away as much steel in the really um, coarse belts, but it's as you go through the belts, this is a much finer finish because it's solid, right? It's not, bu -bu 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 -bu. it's just nice and smooth. Okay, I gotta turn the power on. So I got variable speed there, right there. So, um, I'm just going to show you my technique. Um, there's different ways of, of grinding knives, making knives. Uh, some guys want to pound away on a hammer. I don't want to pound away on a hammer. Um, this is somewhere around 2,340 knives so far in my career. Um, I do stock removal. When I forge, it's, you know, I, I'm not even sure why you forge, to tell you the truth. Um, the foundry makes this steel. They forge this steel. So, um, it's already forged. Um, I'm a knife maker, uh, not a hammer swinger. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go with a fresh belt. This is... Uh, made by 3M. I get the... Welcome back. There is some connectivity issues. I do live out in the country. So, um, here we go. Uh, I'll show you my technique. First things first, I need a dust mask on. That's the only reason I'm still in business. So, anybody who thinks they're being tough by not wearing a mask or not using gloves, yeah, you know what? Just shows you're not a professional. Oh. Oh. Gotta roll that down for sparks come in the top. Super important. I used an of glove and PL premium. Actually, that worn away, but this is a nice hard surface for me to work up against. It's heat resistant. Welding glove on the other hand. 
I go through a lot of glove. Speed it up to maximum. 6,000 RPM. And start horizontally. Just like a guy, boy. Changing to up and down and even all this out.
そうなっブルー Don't need it to blue, but you'll see some blue, that's okay. But as soon as I see blue, I know it's getting a little more meat than I want. I'm not too good to this too. So back to this.
well, it's coming together now. something first now. I'm going to pull this, this flat part right there and there.
cotton. Don't really need this yet. Now I'm going to show you the reason I did that. Back to the really coarse belt. Okay, now when I go up to here with the aggressive, there's a reason why I did that. It's hard to explain.
thank you everyone. It's a pleasure to uh, show you what I'm doing. So you've seen me finish this this part in here with a high finish. It's because when I keep, if you wait till the end to do that polishing, you end up ruining this little transition area right here. So uh, something I learned the hard way. So I did that first and then just came up and was really careful ramping up into both of those areas. It both looks really even to me. I'm going to be taking down these, uh, see there's a little transition right there. I'm going to be hollowing that out on both sides just to get rid of it. And it gives a little sharpening edge to start with. But overall, I'm really happy. That was a, was a lot of precision involved. Like I'm keeping really tight to my body. Um, you know, not trying to do too much. And it's really easy to turn the blade straight and take out your perf your nice little line here, which you want to keep. So thank you all very much. Hope you all have a wonderful day.